Yo guys, what is up? It is your boy, Mushroom Gecko here, and welcome to Capes 3.0. But before we get on to the glorious capes, I have a history lesson for you guys. So, back in the good old days of 2014, I tweeted out to Chrom Dinnerbone, the Mogminer, and Jeb the day after banners were released to say, hey, you should make it so that players can wear banners as capes. And the Mogminer was like, lol, no XD. Uh, because, yeah, Minecon and all that. I'm like, okie dokie, how about putting it on a boat like a pirate ship? And I got no response. But you know what? It's all good. And who was the Mog Miner? Well, he's an ex Mojang developer. Um, he actually works on the rendering engine for Minecraft. So if you see those little black lighting errors, blame him. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It, it, it's all cool. Um,. He was actually the one that teased the doors on Twitter, like the different doors. Remember before how he had only oak doors? Uh, well, the Mog Miner tweeted out, hey, here are these new uh, wood variant doors that we're working on. Um, so that was him. And he also tweeted out the original uh, post for Toast Skin, the Toast Skin for the rabbit. Remember that little girl who lost a rabbit and her rabbit skin put in the game? Yeah, that's what he revealed. So yeah, history lesson out of the way. Let's show you the bread and butter of this video. Ooh, look at this. Not not that yet. Shh, don't worry about that yet. Um, so yeah, this is Capes 3.0. It actually is not inside my body. But if I walk, oh, it's not inside my body. And it's not like flickering back. And I can run. I can go left, right, back. I can strafe and all this stuff. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I can sneak. But if I walk while I sneak, it kind of disconnects, but that's because of scoreboard things. And not, before you click off, hang on, let, let me let me, let me me just tell you guys something. Uh, so yes, uh, you heard scoreboards, but do not click away. It's, uh, it's quite simple. Um, so there's crouch and sneak for scoreboards. So sneak is the amount of time you've spent sneaking like this. Crouch is how far you've moved. Um, so, I tried to originally do crouch, but it didn't work when I was just doing that. It would just like stay up in the air like that. Um, so, I did not want that. So, I originally, so I then decided to go with sneak. So, although you can look like this, it will kind of look weird going like that. But you know what? I think that's a good, uh, a good trade-off, anywho. Um, yeah. Because... I tried to do both of them, but they conflicted with each other, which was kind of bad. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, let's actually clear my inventory. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, you can go straight, left, right, back. You can walk. You can run. Uh, if it <laughs> fixes itself, sometimes it, like, doesn't orientate itself correctly. Uh, you can jump. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah. And, of course, you can do an elytra. Bada bing. And, yes, it looks really stupid. But, it's fine, because when you fly, it doesn't look stupid. It works perfectly fine with the uh, elytra in general, uh, while on the ground. And you can also swim. So, yeah, it... Uh, so I fixed swimming and all that stuff, and I also made it so you can walk along the ocean floor. And so you can walk in the ocean, I guess. So, yeah. Um, and you also see the ship here, and you're like, ooh, pirate ship. Yes, it is pirate ship. Let's get rid of the armor stands. I know, you heard a plural, and I will tell you guys what that is later. Summon that into the boat. And let's go on a little adventure. It looks jittery now, but once we get going, it 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 it, it, uh, it bounces itself out. Let's get out of there. It's gonna do that for a second, but it's gonna go back. Um, so yeah. Let's first get started with uh, with summoning it. So first, we're gonna summon an armor stand. Okay. So keep in mind, all these command blocks are practically identical, except for just. Smaller, just very, very small in differences. 
Uh, so for the boat, it is summon a Minecraft armor stand at the armor or at the command block with all these tags. So normal, small, no base plate, no gravity, invisible marker, and with the tag of boat. So I'm naming the armor stand boat, and to have a the the pose of head be like this. And this one, it's pretty much replaced the entity. Um, Minecraft armor stand MBT tag boat uh, on the head uh, with a red banner with this pattern, which is my little banner pattern over there. <clears throat> uh, same exact thing with this one. So we're first, you know, summoning same armor stand, one more visible, small, no base plate, all that good stuff. Tag of cape though, and we also have, you know, thing to give it the cape. I'm trying to kind of blaster this as fast as possible because my other takes took like 40 to 45 minutes and I don't want to make a video that long because that'll probably just bore you guys. Um, so I'm going to probably skip over some of these. Um, but probably not. I don't know. We'll see. Depends on how I feel as the video goes on. Uh, because they all do the exact same thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste all of these commands into like some sort of pastebin or Google Docs or, or and or make this a schematic. So yeah. Um, so my armor, so, so my capes. Okay, this is going to be a weird video. So, summon left. So I'm summoning an armor stand, same exact thing as everything else, except with the name of left, same thing with right, and uh, same thing with back. And I will show you why I do that. Actually, did I show you the strafing? So like this, left, right, back, you can strafe. Yeah. Uh, so that left, right, and back is for the strafing. Otherwise, you would have what you probably just saw with uh, with this, it would just kind of go off on the side and do its own thing. So you need these for some other commands later. Um, so you left, right, and back. Let's actually make these uninvisible so you can see what they're actually doing. And make this zero. Let's also make the cape armor stand zero and let's also make the base armor stand zero did I change marker I did not want to change marker I wanted to change invisibility there we go all right so let's do that and let's do that okay so let's start off with the first command block this is the base command block. So I'm going to execute if the entity uh, at P with a certain score of still one. Uh, so I'm going to test if that's true. If it is true, we're going to we're going to do it at the we're going to test it, not test. We're going to execute at the nearest armor stand with the tag of base. We're going to run a teleport command to, command to teleport cape to um, to base relative to these coordinates. So it's going to be negative 0.8 blocks down to the ground and negative 0.4 blocks back. And this right here is pitch and yaw. Pitch and yaw are, so this is pitch and this is yaw. So we want to make yaw zero, otherwise if you saw in the AirPods video, when I look up and down, the AirPods moved weirdly. We're getting rid of that by making yaw zero but we're making pitch dynamic. Same idea over here with the with the boats. We are doing negative 0.6 down to the boat, uh, one up. Um, testing if the current player has a score boating equal to one. Now the boating thing is a built-in Minecraft scoreboard thing. Um, so we make a so I made a scoreboard boating with. Minecraft custom uh, boated one centimeter, and I'll put all these in the in the paste bin or whatever, uh, so you guys can just kind of copy and paste it. 
Uh, so just know this is detecting whenever you ride the boat. So whenever you drive it, it does this line. And it um, it executes at the nearest player with the score boat equal to run one to run a data merge to the nearest armor stand with the tag of boat. You know, limit equals one for data merge. Uh, to turn it on fire and to make the pose, you know, 0, 180, and 0. Now, if you saw the other videos, we made this 180, so um, so the stick was not facing us, and so the actual banner part was facing us. Um, and then we just kind of reset the boating score, because when we get out of the boat, we don't want the boating score to, you know, be high or anything, or really any at all, because we don't want this to activate over and over and over again. Um, but when it is off, we activate this to execute at the nearest boat to teleport the banner to the center of the boat, pretty much. So as you saw when I got out of the boat and it just kind of like flicked back into place, that's what this is doing. And again, this is the same thing, running a data merge to... This one is more or less to keep it on fire all the time so it doesn't turn black and have that lighting error. So yeah. Again, these command blocks are pretty much the exact same for everything else. Um, so yeah, I don't know why sprinting is being super weird. Oh, there we go. I think, I've, I, think I just fixed it. Yippee. Okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, or not. Oh, well. It's probably just my ticks or something. I don't know. But these command blocks, like, don't want to do things unless they're, like, block updated. So, yeah. So, this is pretty much our baseline, these two command blocks. We're just teleporting the... Um, we are teleporting... All right, so we're testing first if the entity at P has a score still equal to one or greater. And if so, we're going to we're going to do this, we're going to execute at the nearest armor stand with the name of base to run a teleport command to teleport cape to base at these relative coordinates. So that's what I was talking about earlier. Same thing with the whole pitching yaw thing. We don't want it to move this way, we want it to move this way, which is how it's, uh, it's rotating whenever I turn my head and body. Same thing here with the whole fire thing. It's just constantly setting on fire and setting it to this orientation if you have the score still equal to one or greater. And this thing right here, actually let's go over here first. This thing right here is constantly executing at the nearest player to run a teleport command to teleport base to the player to have the yaw be zero. Now, you might be asking, well, why don't you just teleport the cape armor stand to yourself? Why do you teleport it to base? Well, it's really weird, and I don't know why it doesn't work, but whenever I teleport capes normally to me, and I try to set yaw to zero, it just doesn't work. So I tried a thing where I had a base armor stand, and I teleported it to myself, and I set that yaw to zero, and then I teleported capes to base, and I also set capes yaw to zero, uh, that it would work, and it does work. And, um, and I don't know why it doesn't work. Uh, otherwise so let's actually start with with walking because that that's the pretty basic thing to do and I'm not sure if I showed you this or not but crouching um, let's start with walking so first we're going to execute if the nearest entity has a score of walk one or greater this is pretty much just a scoreboard uh, command or a scoreboard uh, score test if a player has walked at all so, and if that's true, we're going to execute at the nearest armor stand with the tag of base to run a teleport command of, um, you know, teleport the armor stand name of cape to base with these relative coordinates here. And then after that fires, we're going to go on to this one, which sets the orientation. So once again, execute if walk is one or greater. Uh, if so... We're going to set it on fire and position the head of negative 25 F 180 and zero. So negative 25 gives it that little tilt effect right there. It's kind of like that waving effect in the wind. Uh, so yeah. And then this one right here, it's going to be just like the boat thing. We don't want it to constantly keep going. So we're going to reset walk. So that's why walk is equal to one here. Because if you don't walk, <laughs> walk is going to be zero when 
it's when you reset it. So you want it to be zero when you want to do other things so it doesn't interfere and cause jitterness or jitter, I guess. And then here we're gonna also constantly set still to zero because since the, okay, so I need to talk about this. So this is still, this is what the base thing over here is running on. So this is testing if still is one or greater. So this is just constantly going up, 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 up. Um, so yeah, so if I go scoreboard, objective, set display, sidebar, uh, where is still? Still, you can see still go up, but the second I walk, it's constantly resetting. So it's actually not one right now, it is zero, but it just shows us one because it's just constantly resetting so fast which is why you can see it blink. Like right there, you're seeing it go away as I do that it's because it's resetting so fast. So, yeah. Um, that's what walk is. or So that's what the whole reset does is to make it so this does not interfere. But if we had this like that, it would... Hmm, so you really want to prove me wrong, huh, game? Wow, thanks, game. It just, like, unintentionally, intentionally does what it wants to do now, which is weird. Because before, it just... Oh, see? There we go. There we go. So that's what happens if you don't have still active. It will do that. Haha. -ha. See, I broke it. So you need to have still set to always active. So it constantly resets still so the baseline does not interfere. Now you're probably wondering why, why are there no comparators? What is this middle thing and all that good stuff? Well, you see, I'm not using any comparators because I'm having all these command blocks feed into this central system. So I'm going to copy this real quick. Um, so right here, this thing is facing this way, so it's facing over there, and this is facing down into this, because command blocks go into each other, so this one's going into this one, 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 and this one was going into this one, Whoops. this one, which was then going into this one. So this one is just game rule command block output false, same with this one, game rule command block output false, they're just some non-invasive command lines to make sure the command block fires and so it, it it's sure to actually get into here I don't really I, I know I'm just kind of like slurring and just really messing up my speech right now I'm sounding like Joe Biden but um, pretty much these all need to run to these two because this one right here runs into the baseline to make sure the baseline is either on or off or doing its own thing. So yeah, um, turn this to always active. And if you're wondering why we need this, well, if it was not there, it's gonna just not work. So you need to set this to always active so it orients itself correctly. And it also messed up my jump so let's set that to off, then set that back to on. There we go. Yep. So um, you saw that jitteriness, let's just do that and it should fix itself, yep. Huh. Oh wait, hang on. <laughs> there we go, I meant to press done. Not needs redstone. Uh, it just does not want to fix itself. So yeah, if it's just not fixing itself, it's just some weird command block stuff, like in terms of like block updates. So it's just a lot of weird block update stuff that you have to worry about if it jitters. So if it does jitter, just come to this one and then just click done and it should fix itself. Or if it's not that one, go over to walking just click done and it should fix itself most of the time so yeah uh, now sprinting isn't working that's uh, fantastic 
Huh. Man, things just, like, don't want to work when I'm recording. There we go. So, yeah, just if things aren't working, go to that command block line, set it to needs redstone, click done, go back in, so let it, uh, set it to always active, and then it should pretty much fix itself like 90% of the time. So, yeah. Um, now we go to this line. So these three lines pretty much all do the same exact thing, uh, and this deals with the left, right, and back and all that stuff. So, over here, I have, um, I have dummy scores left, back, and right. So, what I'm going to do is execute at the nearest player if the entity of the Minecraft armor stand tags a back. So, this works for back, right, and left. So, if this armor stand, the tag of back, is, um, is within 0.9 blocks of the player is going to run a scoreboard command of um, adding one to back. Same thing with left and right. So with these over here, um, pretty much what these are all doing is executing at the nearest player or at the nearest armor stand with the tag of base to run a teleport command to run the tag of left, right, and back to relative coordinates of 1 for left, uh, negative 1 for right, and negative 1 going backwards for back. So that's how these orient themselves like that. So if that's the case, it's just going to it's gonna detect, hey, are you within 0.9 blocks of that block, or of that armor stand? And if so, it's going to run the, these lines. So take a look at this. So like the smallest movement causes that to activate because you can you can see the armor stand go like just the smallest movement causes that line to activate so yeah and if you're wondering what this is i will show you later uh if, if something breaks in this line it's a great way to show you uh but pretty much all, all these pretty much do the exact same thing so execute if entity at p right equals one walk equals zero so right needs to be one and walk needs to be zero. Remember how over there walk needed to be at least one? Well walk needs to be at least zero here because we're still working with walk. Um, so when right is one, oh, and if you're wondering, oh, well, why aren't you just doing right instead of just, you know, well, why aren't you just doing right? Why do you have to do right and walk? Well, because it breaks if it doesn't. Why does it break? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't code command blocks. Like I didn't make them. Um, so yeah, it's gonna, it's going to execute if entity at P, right, or yeah, if entity at P scores, uh, right is at least one and walk is at least zero. And if that's true, it's gonna execute at the nearest armor stand with the tag of base to run a teleport command to make, um, the armor stand of Cape go to base with these relative coordinates. And after that's done, it's going to fire this one off with a tilt instead of 180. It's going to twist it uh, just slightly back a bit to negative 140. So it tilting that way a bit instead of a full 180, it's going 140. And if, oh, and you see this jittering right now, how this is jittering? Yeah, you go over here, click that, click done. And the jittering stops. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, negative 140F for that, and the negative 20, negative 20 tilts it that way. As you can see, it kind of like tilt, it's not upright, it's kind of like tilted left or right a bit. That's what that, that's what that negative 20 does. And then, um, these three command blocks are resetting right, resetting still, and resetting walk. Um, we talked about why we need to reset still, but we also need to reset walk and right. Uh, walk because so it doesn't interfere with this line. It needs to always be zero so it's not interfering with this line. And this needs to be set back to zero because just like all the other scoreboards for all these, the um, the base score that you're using for that line needs to be zero so it's not constantly, you know, firing all the time. So this works for back as well. So pretty much back and left are the exact same thing. Back is at least one, walk is zero, 
um, you know, relative coordinates over here for cape and base. Um, you know, orientation is 180 because if you go back, it's just 180. There's no tilting um, or anything. <clears throat> reset back, reset still, reset walk. Over here is the same deal. Um, just pretty much a copy and paste of over there except this or this is the exact opposite of right so over here it was negative 140 and negative 20 over here is uh, 140 and 20 and right here um, reset left reset still and reset walk um, so yeah walking underwater real quick um, execute if entity had the scores of depth equal of one so this is to test if the player is walking in the water or underwater, right? So if that's true, it's gonna test, or it's gonna it's gonna execute at the nearest armor stand name of base to run a teleport command. So, uh, teleport cape to base at these relative coordinates. Then it's gonna reset, or then it's gonna set the orientation in the fire. It's gonna also reset depth, and it's also gonna reset still. Uh, swimming, the exact same thing, except this is the orientation for swimming. Um, this is the pose for the head. We're tilting it 90 degrees, so it's not upright, and so it is actually flush with your body, but it is not working right now because of block updates. So if we go, it needs redstone, and then always active, it should be fixed now. Yep. So yeah, so that, that's what the negative 90 does. It, it makes it orient itself like that. Also, jittering does that. Man, all my pre-recordings of this, it never freaked out like this. <laughs> the game must really hate me today. So yeah. Um, okay, for a second I thought walking was really weird. <laughs> so yeah, that's what um, swimming does. So you're setting it tilt to 90 or negative 90 and then you're also resetting swim and you're also resetting still and swim is and all swim is is um minecraft.custom swim one centimeter and the last one i have is sneaking which need redstone always active bada bing right um so test if the entity has a sneak of at least one, and if so, uh, run a teleport command to base of the armor stand type of cape to uh, negative 0.75 blocks below you and negative 1.1 blocks behind you. Um, then it's going to orient the cape negative 35 degrees uh, backwards and 180 degrees upwards, so it's like that. So it's just uh, tilting itself 35 degrees. And then it's also going to reset sneak and reset still. All right, I think that is it. Actually, no, I lied. And I, I love how it just spazzes it out sometimes. It looks stupid, um, but it's my stupid. But for some reason, it just does not want to work. And then reset that. Huh, okay, there we go. No, not there we go. Wait, what? Hold up, let's try something. Run is equal to zero. And run is equal to zero. Oh, there we go. I guess some of these do need to be zero instead of one. Oh, yep, because if it was one there would still be that zero tick where it's interfering with this I don't know I'll mess around with it before I release this to you guys but um, pretty much you're just you're just testing to see if a scoreboard um, value lines up with something before you execute that thing so it doesn't interfere with other things but right now I'm getting a lot of interference which is weird and I think that's because I didn't change this one as well. This one was one, and this one was zero. So these two, I think, were interfering with each other, so I had to fix that just now. 
but otherwise, yeah, it should work. Like I said, I'll test it out for you guys. Make sure everything works well before I send it out to you. Um, so yeah, that that's gonna be it. Um, over here, oh hang on, I I lied. I keep saying it's gonna be it, but it's not it. It's not it's not gonna be it. Uh, hang on, scaffolding. Come on, work scaffolding. All right. This is for the elytra. It's gonna execute if the entity uh, scores in air and elytra are equal to one, at least. Uh, and that over here are these two. So execute at P if the block um, 1.25 blocks below the player is, is uh, air and I still run the scoreboard player to add in air equal to one. Um, and this one pretty much test execute at P if the entity of at P has the inventory slot of 102B, which is your armor slot. Um, if so, it's test to see if armor slot has the ID of Elytra, and if so, it's gonna run the scoreboard command, adding one to Elytra every time. So if I put the Elytra on, that turns on. And if I, whoops, and if I take this off, it's gonna turn off. Now, these two blocks pretty much just reset Elytra and also reset in air. Um, and the reason, is is because it interferes with jump or at least in air interferes with jump um, so if i put my elytra back on and it interferes i can probably show you yeah hang on i need to do this just like every other command block today it wants me to yep there it is in the ground i think yeah um if just just know if we did not have that it would, it would interfere with jump because jump test for I'm not sure if I did jump or not uh, so that's sneak jump so yeah jump equal to one uh, and if so uh, execute at the nearest you know armor stand tag base teleport that to cape have that below okay yeah so i did talk about that but the scoreboard itself for jump is going to be execute at the nearest player if the block 0 0.001 blocks below the player is air and if so it's going to run a scoreboard to add one to jump every time that is true and once you're on the ground as you can see you're in the air and it does that bada bing bada boom also you can see capes or, or not capes jump kind of froze up over here so we need to go over here and always active needs redstone back to always active yeah there we go just it doesn't like to do things sometimes which is weird um so yeah set jump to one and then once you're on the ground it's going to reset jump so bada bing it's gonna it's gonna reset itself every time you touch the ground so yeah, and because that does that, it also interferes with in air because when you're in the air, you have air 0 0.001 blocks below you, but else you have air point or 1.25 blocks below you. So they, so they interfere with themselves. And why do you need to know that? Well, that's because over here, um, it interferes here. So first, this is your standard thing. Test if in air and a light are both equal to one. Now these both need to be true. So in air needs to be true and elytra needs to be true. So you need to have an elytra on you need to have in air um, also have a number at least one or greater for this to work. And if it does have those numbers, it's gonna you know do the whole testing, run run the base, and it's gonna put the armor stand three blocks in front of you and one block below you, which is why it looks like which is why it looks like this, right? Why it looks so wonky now this one right here it's going to execute um add a pf block below minecraft air or if the if the block below you is air run a data merge entity to um have the armor stand position itself negative 90 again but actually what we could do is probably this at p um Scores, oops, scores equals um, 
in air equals one dot dot and huh oh hang on uh and then get rid of this and I also make sure the elytra is on elytra equals one dot dot so instead of just doing that air thing that I just did, just make sure the the lights are on and make sure you have uh, in air be true. And after that, it's going to reset jump. And remember how I was saying that jump and in air interfere? Yeah, we want to turn jump off like all the time. Otherwise, you would get a really hard flicker effect. So that's why I reset jump and or in air and elytra when you hit the ground or when you take the elytra off. And then this thing right here. Um, this command block right here just resets still. So you can get this effect. We. I don't know why it did not work there. I mean, it did work, but there we go. We. Looks awesome. Alright, so. Oh, and I think that fixed jump too, to an extent. So yeah, um, that will do it for capes. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed capes 3.0. Um, also this machine right here, if some of these command blocks do not fire, um, you can set this machine up and what you need is a piston, an observer, and some redstone. So let's actually kill these off real quick and put the invisible back on. Invisible and invisible. Is that this actually to conditional and conditional? Um, and put this to one and put this to one. All right, so some left, right, some in that. All right, cool. All right, so this is what it looks like again with uh, without those pesky armor stands in the way. So yeah, um, so that machine, like I was saying, if none of these fire, set it to needs redstone, and then what you are going to do is dig out a three by three and you are going to set a piston at each corner and then you are going to set observers to look at every single piston the same way. And then you do observers two blocks above the piston, looking down at the piston and having the redstone output on top. You take your building block, fill this in, and then you take your redstone dust put it around here and dig that out get a baton and put that down press it and it should look like this and um, it looks like it's constantly on but it's not it's actually flickering um, it's flickering this many times a second it's actually not really on or it's not really off like completely on uh, it's turning on and off like countless times every second. So just to, to turn it off, you just break that. Uh, so yeah, that should be it for CAPES 3.0. I'm sorry if this video was confusing. Again, I will have some sort of schematic or pace spin uh, in the comments. So you can uh, try things out for yourselves. And again, like if something doesn't work, walk over to it. Needs redstone, always active, and it should work again. So yeah, it doesn't usually do it that often. I don't know why it's doing it that often now, but like I said, I will fix it um, before I send it out to you guys. So yeah, uh, that will wrap it up for Cape. So yeah, level uh, level one of life and the ceiling mushrooms. Have a good time in the cloud geckos and keep those gems shining, everyone. Gecko out. Boop. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. 
and um, <laughs> I'll hopefully fix whatever's going on with this. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys around.